so g protein linked receptors are the third group of receptors and the ligands are very diverse ligands like epinephrine receptor you have an integral membrane protein with seven transmembrane domains and g protein is a trimeric protein with alpha beta gamma subunits attached to the cell membrane by lipid anchors it's not abg it is alpha beta gamma and the effectors are target proteins that show altered activity when they interact with activated g protein subunits so this is the structure of a g protein linked receptor so this is the receptor region where the ligand can bind and this is the g protein over here okay so the g protein will remain interacting with the receptor and this is the subunit structure you have the alpha subunit beta subunit and the gamma subunit so the interaction between receptor and the g protein once the ligand binds the activated receptor recruits a g protein nucleotide exchange occurs gtp replaces gdp and the trimer dissociates into two parts that is the alpha subunit and the beta gamma subunit and both parts can regulate downstream pathways so this is a figure you can see the activated alpha subunit with gtp of the g protein and this is the target protein it goes and binds from the target protein and you have the beta gamma complex also activated so this binding causes a hydrolysis of gtp by the alpha subunits and inactivates the subunit causing it to dissociate from the target protein so this is the rest of the figure so gtp converts this convert has been converted to gdp and the subunit alpha subunit has been inactivated and the gdp or the or the alpha subunit and the beta gamma subunits bind together to form the inactive g protein and the target protein also remains inactive so next is the cyclic amp dependent protein kinase the g proteins signal by regulating the production of cyclic amp so next set of slides is based on how the g proteins cause signal transduction based on which molecules so the g proteins have one major signaling secondary messenger that is the cyclic amp so the cyclic amp is produced by adenyl cyclase which is activated with the help of the g protein so this activation can cause the formation of it could be a stimulatory g protein or an inhibitory g protein if it is a stimulatory g protein it activates adenyl cyclase and increases cyclic amp concentration if it is an inhibitory g protein it inhibits adenyl cyclase and acts by directly regulating ion channels not by decreasing cyclic amp content so the stimulatory g proteins upon dissociation can activate adenyl cyclase adenyl cyclase converts atp to cyclic amp elevated cyclic amp stimulates cyclic amp dependent protein kinase a which is pka this is the process and uh, you can see the structure of inactive pka which has two regulatory subunits and two inactive catalytic subunits in the presence of cyclic amp the regulatory subunits will dissociate from the catalytic subunits and the released catalytic subunit becomes active so the pka activates gene expression this is the whole process so kreb is called cyclic amp response element binding protein so uh, as you can see in the figure the signaling molecule binds to the receptor 
and the activated G protein binds to the target protein which is usually anilyl cyclase and anilyl cyclase becomes activated produces cyclic AMP cyclic AMP activates protein kinase A PKA and the activated protein kinase A activates the inactive CREB or the cyclic KMP response element binding protein and the activated CREB binds to CREB binding protein and the CREB binding protein binds to the CREB binding element that is the response element and the response is the activation of transcription activation or inhibition of transcription so the enzyme regulation uh, example of cyclic AMB dependent phospho uh, phosphorylation by PKA we have several examples here uh, last semester you had metabolism so you've already learned glycogen synthase pyruvate kinase pyruvate dehydrogenase all of this you've studied so these are the examples and next is protein kinase C so protein kinase C some G proteins activate phospholipase C so the first case we saw the activation of anilyl cyclase the second case it's the activation of phospholipase C triggering the formation of inositol triphosphate and diazyl glycerol from phosphatidyl inositol diphosphate so this is the set of reactions that take place the inositol triphosphate acts on the calcium release channels of endoplasmic reticulum and helps in the release of calcium the diacyl glycerol binds to protein kinase C and activates it which binds to calcium So diacyl glycerol, IP3, calcium and signal transduction, these are all important for the PKC uh, basis of the signal transduction. This is the same. So in this slide, uh, I have written in uh, detail regarding the uh, mechanism of action that takes place, just what I explained right now. So you have this in, in detail in further classes. So the initial rise in cytosolic calcium induced by IP3 alters the PKC so that it translocates from the cytosol to the cytoplasmic phase of the plasma membrane. And where it is activated by combination of calcium, diacyl glycerol and phospholipid phosphatidyl serine. So once activated PKC phosphorylates target proteins that vary depending on the cell type. So that is about PKC. Next is PKG, a cyclic GMB dependent protein kinase. So PKG is synthesized by guanine cyclase and it's a single pass transmembrane protein with an extracellular binding site for a signal molecule and an intracellular guanine cyclase catalytic domain. The binding of the signal molecule activates the cyclase domain to produce cyclic GMB which in turn binds to and activates cyclic GMP dependent protein kinase, which phosphorylates specific proteins on serine and threonine. So cyclic GMP activated protein kinase is uh, a not a very common pathway. So this is one example, uh, natriuretic peptide, that is ANP and BNP. So these are the examples for cyclic GMP dependent pathway. Just learn the examples. So this is a pathway that you can see. It starts over here like ANP, BNP binds to guanine cyclase and guanine cyclase converts GTP to cyclic GMP. The CGMP which activates guanine kinase that is PKG and that indicates a number of biochemical reactions inside the cell 
Uh, one is it acts on triglycerides in this is this is a hormone sensitive lipase. It uh, acts on AMP kinase, P38 MAP kinase. So these sort of functions are available. So next is calmodulin dependent protein kinase or CAMK. So earlier we have seen the production of or the activation of PKC by phosphatidylinositol diphosphate. So protein kinase C uh, ligand binding to receptor causes a conformational change in receptor and its intracellular domain binds to an intracellular G protein. The G protein dissociates and one subunit interacts with and activates an enzyme phospholipase C which cleaves the phosphatidylinositol into two messengers that is diacylglycerol inositol triphosphate. Diacylglycerol binds to and activates protein kinase C. IP3 binds to calcium channels and leads to influx of calcium ions. The calcium ions bind to calmodulin and calmodulin becomes activated which binds to calmodulin dependent protein kinase and the released calcium ions also activate protein kinase C. So increased calcium activates isocitrate dehydrogenase. Depletion of calcium will lead to calcium entry from outside the cell. So this is another example of calmodulin dependent protein kinase. I think you've already seen that last semester. So calmodulin has four calcium binding sites with two in a globular N-terminal domain, the other two in a C-terminal globular domain. So in the presence of calcium, each domain of adopts an open conformation. So this is the structure of calmodulin and you have the calcium molecules over here. And the calcium binds to the calmodulin in such a way that it bends in a particular way. So each calcium has four calcium binding sites. So four calcium can bind to calmodulin. And uh, this exposes a hydrophobic pocket that renders calmodulin functional for binding to target sequences. So this is the target sequence which is inactive and the calmodulin wraps around the peptide resulting in the formation of high affinity complex. The high affinity of binding of calmodulin to a target sequence is only partly responsible for the enzyme activation as it may subsequently interact with other areas of the enzyme. So this is the uh, figure of calmodulin kinase system where you can see uh, voltage sensitive calcium channels, ligand gated receptor channel, phosphoinositide linked receptors. So all these effect on calmodulin kinase 2 and calmodulin kinase 2 can cause protein phosphorylation which regulates nerve function including all these different types of function. So this is the domain structure of calmodulin dependent protein kinase. You have a catalytic domain, the regulatory domain and the association domain. So this is the normal structure of calmodulin. It remains compact and auto inhibited. It inhibits itself. So the calcium calmodulin activated cam kinase 2 is, uh, has this structure because the presence of calcium bound to calmodulin opens or activates the structure of calmodulin kinase. So there are different uh, calmodulin dependent protein kinases 1, 2 and 4. So 1 and 4 have broad, uh, broad but overlapping substrate specificities and same the mechanism of activation. And uh, protein kinase 2 has a broad substrate specificity with substrates found in nuclear, cytoskeletal and membrane compartments of cells and it has a property of autophosphorylation mechanism. 
which results in trapping of calmodulin on the kinase. So the autophosphorylation is an important part of regulation which allows it to respond to cellular calcium concentrations and the calcium calmodulin dependent protein kinase 2 in the neuron synapse where its uh, translocation and activation level regulate a number of proteins in the postsynaptic cell. So next is AMP dependent protein kinases. So AMP dependent kinases uh, affect uh, these pathways. It, can, it activates cell survival, glycolysis, glucose transport, enos, nitric oxide synthase, beta oxidation fatty acid synthesis. It inhibits protein synthesis, cholesterol synthesis, ion channels, fatty acid synthesis and glucose regulated gene transcription. So this is the details of the structure. So this is the AMP kinase. We will be looking into all these mechanisms in detail in future classes. Again more uh, about AMP kinase. So it acts as a central energy sensor. Uh, it can um, uh, deactivate, uh, activated AMP kinase can deactivate phosphoenol pyruvate carboxykinase and glucose 6-phosphatase, thereby decreasing hepatic glucose production, increases glucose uptake by inducing glucose transporters GLUT4 and GLUT1. AMP kinase also stimulates lipid metabolism by decreasing malonyl CoA levels through inhibiting acetyl CoA carboxylate and activation of malonyl CoA decarboxylase. So these are the different interactions between the G proteins and RT RTKs. So you have uh, PKA, PKC, calmodulin kinase, MAP kinase, and PKB.